Today I'm checking out this brand new focuser from Astro Oasis. Hey folks, my name's Steve and welcome to Scotia Astro. I've just received this newly released autofocuser from the folks over at Astro Oasis, which is the next generation of the previous release model. A big thanks to Frank Chen and his team for giving me the chance to try it out and to share my findings with all you guys out there. For full disclosure, I've sent this unit from Astro Oasis, but this isn't a paid review or sponsorship and Astro Oasis hasn't provided me any input into the review or requested to see it before it's published. So as ever, you'll get my full unbiased opinion and then you can decide whether it's a good fit for your setup. I'll provide links in the description below the video to this unit and Astro Oasis's main website so you can have a look at it as well as their other products. I'm planning to break this review down into two separate videos, with the first instalment here going over the main specifications of the unit, a quick look of what's included in the box and how I'm planning to use it myself. Part 2 will go over the installation of the focuser and testing it out under real world conditions. I wanted to get this video out first though so I can tell you a bit about it and you can decide whether it might be useful in your setups at home. If you want to stay up to date with this and my other astrophotography adventures, then please consider subscribing and click the bell notification below so you don't miss out on any of my future uploads. This really helps my channel to grow, so thanks very much for your support. So what's the deal with this wee fella? Well, it's a new offering from a Chinese-based company called Astro Oasis, and as you can see, it sports a different design from many of the other popular autofocusers in the market today. As well as producing these unique autofocusers, the company also manufactures filter wheels and other accessories that are specifically aimed at us astrophotographers. This here is the second generation of their autofocuser, which is called the Oasis Rose Focuser, and it contains many upgrades and improvements from the first generation, which I'll go over later in the video. It basically attaches to the core knob of your focuser, in the case of a refractor at least, and it has a handy clutch mechanism that you can disengage to allow for manual focusing when you need it. This is a really cool feature that's lacking in the majority of offerings available today, so I'm looking forward to testing this out. The specific design of this unit means it can be fitted to a huge selection of scopes, including refractors, Newtonians and SCTs, usually without the addition of a bulky adapter plate. There's a really comprehensive set of instructions laid out on their website for fitting this focuser to different scopes, so I really like the attention to detail here. Astro Oasis has really put in the effort to provide as much help and advice as possible to the customers, so that's a really nice touch. I'll be focusing on refractors for this review though, and that's what I'll be using to test mine out. But first, let's take a look at what comes in the box and its physical specs. My rose came very well packaged and the box contains nicely organised and clearly labelled mini packets including the focuser body itself and the various gears, screws and other attachments you'll need to connect to the scope of your choice. I'll cover this more in my next video though when I take you through the installation process. I do have to say that Frank over at Astro Oasis was very helpful in email chats as we discussed the scope that I was planning to fit the rose to. He was also super responsive even over the weekends so top marks for me in terms of customer service. In terms of physical specs, the rose is a tiny wee thing, measuring just 62.5mm by 36mm. This is especially helpful for minimising weight and potential balance issues in your rig, so that's a huge bonus for Astro Imagers. Despite its size, Astro Oasis claims that it can drive gear loads of more than 5 kilos, but I'll be sure to test that out. Even though it's small and relatively light, it's reassuringly solid with an all-metal construction and it feels like a quality item. All the gear, screws and other attachments also look well made, so I'm expecting good things from this unit. Let's have a look now at the main feature set of these Astro Oasis focusers and then we'll go into the upgrades in the smaller but newer version. For a quick comparison, here's a chart showing the common and new aspects of the different generations, so have a wee pause at the video if you want to check that out in more detail. Like the previous generation, this focuser is a fully integrated unit with an unobtrusive feel, which I really like, and I'm also a big fan of the plain black colouring too. As well as USB connections, which I'll cover in a bit, these focusers can also be controlled with a mobile phone or tablet via Bluetooth. This is done through a dedicated app, which can be downloaded from the company's website. I'll have a good test of this feature, but I'll likely be using the focuser in the more traditional sense through software on my PC. Speaking of this, the Oasis focusers are fully compatible with ASCOM, Indie and Indigo on Windows, Linux and Mac OS systems, so you have a full range of control options here. Drivers, plugins and firmware are also available to download on Astro Oasis' webpage, but I'll link to that below. Both generations also share the simple installation feature, consisting of a single screw fitting to the main focuser body. This means you can swap the focuser in and out with minimal fuss. This is great if you want to try the focuser out in different scopes, so you have a range of options here. The standout feature of the Oasis focusers, in my opinion at least, is the unique clutch function. Basically, you can engage and disengage the clutch and connection of the unit to your focus knob by switching here between the on and off settings. This means you can turn your course focus knob manually, but then switch the motor focusing in if you want. This is handy if you want to use the scope without the motor or get close to your focus point before engaging the motor again. You don't see this option in many readily available focusers today, so it's a nice touch. So what's new about the second generation? 
Well, Astro Oasis have made a number of tweaks and improvements in regards to the construction, fitting and operation of the Rose Focuser, and this makes it even more useful than the previous generation. One of the most obvious of these is the fact that you can now power the Focuser via a 12V DC port and a new USB-C port. The previous version only supported the 12V option, so this is a big handy upgrade. This is great for cable management for those with a mini PC who don't want a large power cable to deal with. I'll be testing out both options in my next video though, so I'll let you know how it performs in a real world test. A new safety feature has been added to the Rose to prevent the focus from moving beyond its minimum or maximum ranges. A stall detection system has been built into this unit so it protects the internal gearing and your focuser too. When imaging here in the UK it can get pretty cold at night, at any time of the year really, so this Rose has a built in heating module that can keep the focuser working efficiently in low ambient temperatures. This can be controlled from within the software, so I'll have a play around with that and bring you some results after testing. There's also a new physical part to help in fitting the focuser to your scope. The new gear locator is temporarily attached during fitting to make sure that the gear is installed in the correct position. Once the focuser is attached, the locator part can be removed. Astro Oasis have redesigned the integrated PCB, which they claim improves reliability and stability around the power module, as well as the USB-C, DC power and temperature sockets. I haven't tried the previous generation, so I can't directly test this, but I'll certainly be able to gauge whether the unit performs as required during my upcoming testing. Finally, the new Rose Focuser is a good deal smaller than the previous generation. Both the length and diameters had 14.5 and 4mm shaved off respectively. As I said, this smaller size and lighter weight is a big advantage, especially with Astro Imaging Rigs, so it's great to see here. So how am I going to use it? Well, I'm planning to fit this now onto my favourite refractor, my excellent Skywatcher Esprit 100, which is a 100mm Super Apo triplet. I've taken some of my favourite images with this scope, but I'm excited to see how the Rose pairs with it, and I'll cover this in my next instalment, so stay tuned. So that's my first look at this cool wee focuser from Astro Oasis. I'm off to get this fitted now and I'll get it fully tested when I eventually get some clear skies. Thanks for tuning in, have a great day or night wherever you are in the world, and clear skies to you all.